Yo, what's going on guys? Turkey Monster here, and once again, we're back with MTG Arena, and we're going to be taking a look at a list that I've kind of been talking about since we did spoilers for Crimson Vow, um, and it's something that I went ahead and tossed together based on what I had and what I've seen. I'm sure it's a way more efficient, better version to do this, but this is just kind of what I wanted to do uh, based on what I already have. I might make some changes here and there in the future, but... This is mono black aggro, very simple, very effective creatures early on with some good um, draw spells, some good removal spells, and honestly, it's a sink or swim deck. If you don't win early, you usually die to mid to late. So if you stumble too much, it's really over a lot of the times. But um, in the one mana slot, you can see the twos are overwhelmingly stacked. One mana slot, we got one Blood Beckoning, and that's just to basically grab a couple cards later on when we've exhausted a lot of things and they've used a lot of removal to get them back in our hand. We don't mind getting them back to hand instead of field because of the fact that we can easily just redeploy them because they're so cheap. But I'm only running it as a one. It's a little, little insurance policy, as it were. Uh, Blood Chief's Thirst, one of the best removal spells in the game and honestly you can't beat it early on Forsworn paladin is a 1-1 with menace and it can uh get bigger and if you need to if you're getting really mana screwed you can uh make a treasure token should you need to but that's like emergency honestly just being a 1-1 menace is the main reason why we run it shambling guest um Gets in a lot because people don't want to trade a lot of their 2-2 creatures for basically that one and the negative one. So it happens to get in a lot. And it does act as a removal spell for things that are left at 1 HP or if they already have just naturally one toughness. Um, it works really, really well with things like Village Rites and uh, Deadly Dispute and the Fell Stinger. So... We do have some sacrifice package uh, scenario in there, but honestly, it gets in a lot of damage on its own. And then Valentin, Dean of the Vein. We don't run the Lisette. Um, Very similar to the Forest Warren Paladin. It's a one mana, one one menace lifelink. And if one of their creatures dies, it gets exiled instead of just straight up dying, which is great. As long as it's a non-token. But there's a lot of Disturb and other Graveyard synergies, so this is a big deal for it. And then uh, prevents things like the Shambling Ghast for the enemy as well. And um, the, what is it called? The Eye Twitch, things like that. And when things do die, we can pay extra mana if we have nothing to play and make a 1-1 one, one, uh, pest token, but that's just bonus if we uh, happen to have the extra mana around and nothing to play with it. And as we've mentioned, village rights, a couple copies. Um, a lot of people are going to remove our creatures. We might as well turn those creatures they're removing into cards. Um, Blood Sky Berserker, surprisingly effective. Um, it can get menace and get pumped up pretty easily because we're usually casting a couple spells. Um, even just as simple as playing Shambling Guest and village rights can give you just two spells immediately you play blood sky berserker and another creature on the field and immediately you get something uh you get it pumped up by two so once you get it out there it starts to put in quite a bit of work we already mentioned deadly dispute gives us treasure which we can always sack the treasure instead of having to sack creatures but it also gets us a little bit extra deployment or helps us fix some of the mana um ghoulish procession Honestly, surprisingly good. Um, very minimal commitment. You just toss it on the field. And at some point, something of yours or the enemy will die. And we don't run a lot of tokens. So if they remove our creatures, we at least get some value back as a 2-2 two -two creature that can attack once before it dies. It can't block, but it can just get in one last time. And again, if we're removing their creatures, we also get this. Graph Reaver. Um, surprisingly very, very risky to run. 
Um, it's a two mana three three, which is insane and really really good. But it does have the downside of at the beginning of your upkeep, this deals one damage to you, which has killed me before. But honestly, you kind of don't care. Like you don't mind you running your life down to run theirs down a lot faster. Um, it does have exploit. And you can kill a planeswalker if you exploit something. I have yet to make this happen. That's just the cherry on top. If if that's a thing. Um I don't I don't play it for that ability. I play it because it's a two mana three three. Grim Wanderer is a weird one because on one hand it's really hard to get it to come out when I want it to. But if people make bad trades or if they chump block this comes out and it's pretty damn good um or if they remove my creature i can play this if i haven't played anything main one which is why we usually don't so very very handy and five three on turn two or three or even four pretty pretty big swinger and we got infernal grasp again we don't mind losing a little hp to just get rid of the thing it's the best removal card for this deck because of the fact that it just kills anything. Jadar, Ghoul Caller of Nefalia. Um, again, just really good value because we don't run a lot of uh, decayed creatures. We have the Procession and then we have Jadar. That's about it for the most part, I think. Um, so he's always, almost always just going to make another zombie. And just more things to throw at them. Skyclave Shade is something I probably could run four of. Because it's so good. It's super recursive. It's super aggressive. It can't block. It wants to get in there. And later on when you have five mana. You can bring it back. Or you could play it from your hand. And just. Um, whatchamacallit. Play it as a 5-3. Uh, so very aggressive card. Very hard to get rid of. And uh, very good. I just didn't want to spend the uh, wild cards on it at the moment, but that's probably one of the upgrades I would make. Tainted Adversary is another one that I would probably add more of from some of the uh, less optimal things and add these because this can just make a bigger army and just get bigger and it's a two three for two already and it has death touch like it's a very solid creature and so just being able to dump a bunch of your mana late game when you draw this at the end like this can make a huge difference but it's also just a very good creature for two mana vengeful strain that strangler is weird because like it basically says i'm gonna keep attacking you until you get rid of this and it's not a terrible sacrifice target um because when it dies it comes back as the aura and you can put it on a creature or a planeswalker that they control and begin their upkeep they either sacrifice a non-land permanent oh no they there's not even a choice i keep forgetting i keep reading this wrong they have to sacrifice a non-land permanent and lose a life so it's just getting rid of things getting rid of things and making them lose life so it's kind of like a removal, but it's also kind of like a drain. It's surprisingly scary for the opponent. But it was also a uh, a fun little card to toss in. The Voldaran Bloodcaster, honestly, low-key, kind of really, really strong. Because it's a 2-mana two 2-1, two and it flies. So it's got evasion. It's going to get in there. And whenever they kill one of your creatures... Or if you sacrifice one to one of your handfuls of sacrifice outlets, you make blood tokens. And she can turn blood tokens, if you have enough, into more creatures with evasion. So that's super good. Um, And she just becomes better once you have enough. So surprisingly good. The white is a 2 mana 3 2. It comes in tapped, but like who cares? We're not blocking in this deck really, so... Um, very aggressive creature, and if, you know, something dies, you get a zombie, and you get to exile that card. It's not that big a deal. It's not a huge draw for it, but it's a nice little bonus. And then in the three drop slot, we have Blood Pact as a way to get a little bit more refill, and the Fell Stinger, 
a 3-2 creature is very aggressive. I like that. And it can exploit and turn uh, creatures we don't need anymore that aren't going to be effective into card draw to do more things. And if need be, we can kill the opponent with the extra two life drain. Very handy. And Nighthawk Scavenger is a three mana creature with flying death touch and lifelink. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger with more card types in the graveyard. So the more things that we that they basically put in there, the better this is going to get. But it's also just a flying creature that's going to keep getting in there. So very solid. And we run one hive of the eye tyrant. I don't really want to mess with snow mana and put in the um whatchamacallits the faceless havens although that's probably not a terrible idea in fact i'll probably do that now because saying that i don't see why i wouldn't i mean that's honestly why because i only have the one so there we go that answers that if i had more than one i would craft these up and do that but i don't so i won't so there's that but yeah that's the deck let's get into some games and show you what we got All right, what do we got here? Lexi Chan. Um, it's not amazing, but having removal and two solid creatures, totally fine with. Enough mana. We don't like to mulligan if we can help it, so. Of course, we're on the draw. Anytime you play an aggro deck, you're almost always going to be on the draw and your opponent's going to be on the play. But when you face an aggro deck, they're always on the play. At least that's how it feels. But keep that. Alright, Barbarian class. So, if we let them get to late game, it's going to be a problem. Um... I guess it doesn't really matter much. We'll get this out. Turn two, we could do this. Turn three, we can do this. Or turn two, we can do both of these, depending on what they do. They just level up their blue white. All right. So let's see what we got. Whatever it is, they're going to be able to haste it out pretty quickly because. Probably just gonna play a land and yep. So they're all about hasting things in. Might as well get in what we can while we can. And they do get to roll extra too, don't they? Two treasures, that's annoying. Okay. So can spend three mana and give it a boost or we can hold up deadly dispute. I don't mind doing that. Let's get rid of, oh, that's an expensive creature. Holy crap. I didn't even realize. So we have two menace creatures. One of them can get bigger, so we could do five, six damage next turn. We just have to hope they don't sweep the board, and if they do, we can just get them back. Ooh, that's kind of risky. They're just going to draw. They have three mana. All right. 
We're gonna go ahead and get in there. Just do this. This. Wound above, wound above. Do this. Do this. Do this. And if they don't wipe the board, they're in trouble. deck was full in on the rolling I commend them but wasn't enough all right let's get into another one Wang Yumo. Okay. Um, it's be an interesting one. Turn one, turn two, or turn probably turn two, turn three, somewhere on there. All right, so they didn't have a one mana removal spell at instant speed. Red, green. Okay, got the werewolf. So <clears throat> I can either play something and set up for next turn, or I could just go now. If I draw land, I can go this and this. We'll go for the greedy play. Might not be optimal, but it will be greedy. So I can go for a four mana play here. Oh, he's gonna go for another one, okay. I got another two drop to play. Yep. Okay, greed is good. Do this. This is going to pump up and it's gonna give them mana even though this is a 3-3. We do this. this They don't get to draw off the pack leader at least. We're gonna have two mana to play with. I'm 
No place. Okay. We just get in. We play the white. If they target something, we can village rights it. That's annoying, but it is what it is. Okay. So we will attack this. Because it's got menace, we'll do this. The forest will be overrun. Oh no, I forgot about that part. Well, now it's nighttime. Yeah, that's a problem. Oh, we are very dead. Yep, that's death. Unfortunate. But, you know, it happens. We'll just have to catch him on the next one. Dry docker. Bone and dry. Okay. I don't hate this. I can play almost everything in my hand. And if for any reason something dies, we can play this. So I like it. Opponent's ready to go. Oros. Burn deck. Okay. Well, which one would be better? Probably this one. Because we don't want to deal damage to ourselves any more than we have to. Interesting. Next turn, we'll leave the shambling gas back. Assuming it lives. Interesting. So they're not a burn deck, they're a weird spell slinger channeler deck. Got it. So we do this. Do this. Do this. Say go. And we're gonna do some cheeky play. When they attack, I'm assuming they're going to make that thing big. Oh, and they gave a trample. That's annoying. And unfortunate, because they gave it trample. So we might as well not block it. We block this. It's really dumb. And it's just funny. No, it doesn't work. So because it says target opponent, it doesn't work. Unfortunate. Mega treasure. 
Unfortunately, we are not the beat down in this deck. They can't block, might as well get in. Yeah, this deck is uh damn near designed to counter me. Oh, I could have played that land, but I guess we didn't need it. Yeah. That'll do it. That card is quite annoying. But that's what it is. All right, let's see what we got here. I can't read your name. That's not fair. Rocking in a Hiri avatar. Of course, we're on the draw, but we do have a pretty cool hand. Keep it. Play this. Play Linton, I guess. Opponent's rocking blue. Blue red, all right. Blue red giants. Interesting. Mm -hmm. One mana away from being able to kill that. Two mana away from being, or I'm sorry. Two mana away, oh, he didn't do that. Interesting. <clears throat> Assuming he's just gonna kill this. No? Didn't kill it, interesting. Well, it lets me play that. Okay. That leaves up counter magic. I assume that's probably what the intention was. Hmm. Just gonna trade it. Iteration into iteration, they're pretty much throwing their turn away just to draw some cards. They will have access to two mana. Hate to get swept, but it's probably how it's going to be. We needed to play the Nighthawk just to be able to maintain enough pressure because two one ones aren't quite going to be enough. Oh, interesting.
So they only have one mana, so they can't stop me from killing it. In turn. And if they go to remove something, we can just village rights. Okay. Okay. Oh, I was like, what is it? Why? Why? But it's because I was dumb and did it wrong. So far, not a problem. GG. So that is the definition of win some, lose some, because we got a few games in against the uh, tribally kind of decks in one, and then the other ones just out aggroed us. So there's that. Alrighty, so as you can see from the previous games, um, some of them we did really well, some of them it was a struggle, some of them we out-resourced them, and sometimes we struggled and couldn't quite keep up. It's not the premier aggro deck in the format, but it is a fun little thing that I like to do, and I like to find off-meta decks like this that function just right, they fill that niche, it's aggro beatdown kind of deck, but it's not one you'll see a lot. Um, I encourage you to find better ways to make your own version. Again, this is just cobbled together out of things I had. Uh, we crafted a couple cards just to finish it off real quick on stream the other day. But it performed really well on stream when I played it, so. Again, if you had more Faceless Havens, it would be ideal to swap these out for some Snow Swamps and uh, run the Faceless Havens. Maybe even some of the other uh, man lands. You never know. Um, definitely some tweaks that could be made. So, yeah. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Hopefully it's been entertaining or informative. Um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for decks that you want to see, please make sure you leave them down below in the comments. And if you liked or disliked this video, please leave the corresponding uh, feedback. Because regardless of which button you press, it's always encouraging to get feedback so I know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. But I can optimize the video for you guys. And again, this was made based on my collection, not optimal things, so it's going to be a little jank. But it's always fun to be jank. And if you want to see more videos of Magic or any other content, because we do other things like coning guides and some other things um you can feel free to subscribe and if you want to be notified whenever we do upload a video and you are subscribed you can hit the notification bell so that it goes directly into your inbox and lets you know but i think that's just about it ladies and gentlemen you've been absolutely motherfucker wonderful i've been dark monster but it's time for me to go so goodbye bye